Welcome to the channel rather dubiously called Rufio. I'm the best Yugi tuber in my street, a very average player who uses this platform to trick you into thinking I'm good at and capable of playing Yu-Gi-Oh on any kind of level at all. Before we get started, why don't you hit subscribe for me, even if it's not because you secretly enjoy bad content, but because you pity me. I need every bit of help I can get. Hi guys, this is Joe here from Rufio, a slightly different setting in the backdrop here. For those of you who tune in regularly, you'll notice I'm not recording at my work today. And the reason for that is, well, every motherfucker has been coming back to the office and it is simply too loud. So I'm now recording these at home again, along with all my other videos for the foreseeable future. Not necessarily the best scenario to be in, but that's fine. We're going to continue to bring you the best content that we can. But enough waffling about how I'm feeling a little bit sorry for myself. We are going to get stuck into the market watch today. We've got a big variety of stuff that I'd like to cover. Mostly text that we're seeing used in a variety of decks. We've seen one or two cards bought out that I'd potentially like to get covered in here so we can have a quick look. But we'll stop waffling and we'll get stuck in. So today we are starting off with one of the latest buyouts that we are seeing across the EU, the new Gizmec card, Gizmec Uka. And uh, this one is getting brought in because what a lot of people are doing is they're comboing this off with uh, Torrent. That's what it's called, Torrent, the fucking barrier statue, little bitch thing, and they summon that out, and then your needle fiber players just end there. That, that's the gist of what's going on here. So this card is absolutely rocketed, as you can see on the screen. It was probably five to six euros before they are now 20, 25, 30 euros a pop. If you haven't got them already, you should probably snipe them before they continue to go up. This will be a must-have card once the new sets come round and once we're back in play and that kind of thing. You're going to see this be more and more important, as long as Needle Fibre is in the game at least, because it's going to be one of those cards that people are taking in. It's important to note as well that it obviously has other uses, but that is the main reason that we're seeing it shoot up so much. When competitive play returns, expect this to continue to be a hard card to pick up. Next up, we're looking at Ravenous Croco Dragon. This is a card that went right the way down. Uh, it wasn't seeing so much play, but again, it's actually starting to get back into things a little bit. It's seeing a bit of play. Uh, and as a result, we are seeing the price scoop up a little bit. We're looking towards the five euro mark at a minimum. Uh, not so long ago, only a couple of weeks ago, not even, in fact, we were right the way down to one euro. So it's quadrupled in price maybe five six times that price even in less than a week uh so expect that we'll continue to see this rise don't forget we have got a lot of online tournaments going on which are kind of shaping this weird meta that we kind of have that's going on so expect this to keep going up next up we're looking at another card that is seeing quite a bit of play actually uh in this format at the moment a pointer of the red lotus this is one that continues to see a kind of weird fringe amount of play it'll come in and it'll go out and it'll come in and go out uh, this is one of those cards that kind of just holds a good value. It is only the one print, so that is part of the reason why the price is so high. But it's also really useful. You essentially just vomit your entire board out, set this, and then as soon as your opponent's turn starts, you just take out a problem card and job done. Uh, it is one of those cards that you should definitely consider having available to you, but don't be surprised if this is the kind of card that we see reprinted in an OTS pack when competitive play resumes again. As a side note, these are sat at around €4.50, which actually isn't too bad. It is only in good condition, so if you want something a bit more near mint, you are probably looking a little bit higher towards the €6 Euro mark, and then for something even better, you're looking towards the €8 mark. So expect to pay a small premium if you want it in really good condition, but that's what most people are going to go for. Although, do consider the fact that I do really think that this is the kind of card that we would see get a reprint in an OTS pack, and then there'll be thousands of them out there. Next up, we're looking at Mecha Phantom Beast O-Line, another card that has continued to creep up over the last couple of formats if you didn't have your copies of this card already you absolutely should have done by now it's insane that you've left it this long this was always only going to go up it's one of the few really solid tuners that are left in the game one of the broken ones that hasn't been addressed and i expect that this will continue to creep up as we can see it is sweeping up Overall, at one point, this was a £2 card or a, uh, maybe about a €3 Euro card. And now we're seeing it up towards the €5 Euros at a minimum uh, and expect that to continue to go up. This is a really, really important part of the combos that we're seeing coming out. And uh, if you're interested in the kind of involvement that this card has in those combos, there's actually a combo video I will have released by the time this video is up that actually addresses one such combo that this card goes into. But it's pretty obvious what it does here. We're looking at a machine, a tuner. It's easy enough to get out of the deck and it does just set up a whole bunch of degeneracy 
with Halka Fibrax. Next up, this is a card that I'd seen some people asking around on uh, on Facebook about cards that they wanted to take a look at the price of. Uh, Avramax, a solid €22.90 for a first ed. Of course, there is, you know, shipping and things to consider with that as well. So you're probably looking towards a €25 Euro mark all in. Um, Price-wise, we've seen it yo-yo up and down. This is probably about right for the card. Um, it is a really, really solid option. It's not seen too much play at the moment, although that may change at any given time. Next up, I was really interested in taking a look at some of the Cosmo cards. One of the things I want to try and do on these market watches is take a bit of a look at, say, a particular archetype that has some value cards in there and just see how those are performing on the whole, just to see if people are maybe randomly picking them up or if they shut up out of nowhere. So at the moment, we're looking at Dark Destroyer. We're looking at the good print of this, the Secret Rare. Uh, for a first ed in good condition, you are looking around €15. Euros. Again, with postage, probably closer to €20. Um... This is fairly normal for the price. We have seen it as high as 26 uh, in, in the last few months, but I'd say about 20 euros altogether is probably not too bad, actually. And looking at some more Cosmo cards here, we've got Cosmo Tin Can uh, for good condition in first edition. You're looking around 6 euros again with your postage. You're probably paying a little bit more. It's actually a pretty good price, actually, because not too long ago it was a 10 euro card. So to see it around 6 euros, probably not a bad pickup, to be fair. If you're someone who likes to play this deck, this is actually a really reasonable price point for this card. And it is probably one that will go up again unless we see another print out of it, which... I don't really see happening anytime soon. And finally, for the Cosmo cards that I wanted to look at, I wanted to look at Cosmojo. Another one of those cards that just randomly has a lot of value. This card's one of those ones that belongs in a weird cult deck that sort of has some playability at all times. People will take it to regionals and take it to the locals and, and mess around with it. But this has really held its value quite well, actually. It's a solid €9. Euros. We do see it normally fluctuate up to towards the 15 mark but nine euros is a pretty solid price point for it uh, i don't expect to see it go much below that we have seen at one point it dipped down but i imagine that was a very short term drop and someone will have bought that um but yeah for good condition in in unlimited edition you're looking around a nine euro mark you're looking towards a 10 euro mark in first edition which isn't too bad all things considered so now out in the US, we had some issues with Shunui Solitaire disappearing in an ultra format. Uh, at the moment, the price aren't too bad here in the EU. Again, we always like to make these comparisons just to see what's going on. The US market is, is fucking wild. Um, our market's a little bit more stable, a little bit less bullshit. Um, we do have our moments, of course. But at the moment, yes, two euros... For an unlim or three euros for a first aid, of course, you've got to factor in some of the delay and postage costs and that kind of thing to come from another country. But to get a play set for maybe 10 euros is actually a really solid price point. We are going to take a look at the, uh, the Mega Pack version as well from Mega Pack 17 to see if there's much fluctuation there. So just looking at the Mega Team version of Shirinui Solitaire, we are seeing it a little bit all over the place over time but it is really really quite cheap actually you're looking between a euro 50 and two euros depending on where you want to order it from the condition there is good we're looking at near mint on all of those all first edition pretty good price point next we're taking a look at another card that seems to be disappearing off the market again you crazy americans making me look at these cards i just wanted to see how it was getting on so at the moment for good condition at ghost rare Gold, Solemn Judgment, you're looking around 20 euros. Uh, for a first edition, you're looking at 22, and that's just in good condition. Anything near mint or above, you're looking up towards the 25 euro mark. I expect to see this creep up. This is the only Ghost Rare print of this card. We're not likely to get Ghost Rares back anytime soon. My understanding is that they're very expensive for Konami to print, and that is part of the reason that we don't have them anymore. That may be a wrong point, and if anyone does have any more information on that, of course, feel free to drop it down in the comments, and I'm always happy to correct myself. But yes, the price will continue to go up, so if you don't have these, and they are something you want to get sooner rather than later, if this card sees a lot of competitive play again, the Ghost Gold Rares will only go up. The only other real ones of competitive value are your original Metal Raider prints and your Retro Pack and your Ultis, of course. But the Gold Ghost Rares are a really respectable print to have, even though they're Gold Rare. The fact that they're 30 euros a piece tells you everything you need to know. Next, we're taking a look at something else that's really quite wild. The continuing price rise of tuning in Ultimate Rare. This is not really a surprise scene as we're seeing so many combo decks and pieces involving synchros and that kind of thing going and doing the rounds. And we are seeing these in good condition, first edition, for 30 euros 
minimum. If you want something in near mint, you're looking at 35 as a standard, and there is only one of those. If we go further down, we are looking towards the 40 euro mark. 120 euros for a play set of this card to get your players going. It is an ulti, so of course they do always hold some good value, but they have not been this high in quite some time. If we go back to November before this was all being played, you're looking at 7 euros. They've quadrupled in price and then some across the board. This is a massive chance for you to cash in on these if you do want to get rid of them. If you're a buyer, now is a really good time to pick them up. There's a possibility, of course, that they will drop, but ultis tend to hold their value long term, even if they lose playability. Next, we're going to take a look at Urgent Schedule, another one of these one-time print cards. Of course, we normally cover Lieber on here, the super juggernaut, dreadnought, fucking massive cannon motherfucker that's been shooting through the sky and we are now seeing this around the 22 euro mark for something in first edition and then the rest are pushing up towards 25 we have seen some listed as high as 33 euros as we can see on the screen there um just over 20 euros for this is it's pretty wild people are believing a little bit in trains and their playability i haven't really seen them do too much in terms of competitive play at least in online tournaments but we are seeing an abundance of eldritch and adamantipator being played and maybe those have a particularly favorable matchup against this kind of thing next up we're going to look at some waifu tax cards some more dragon made goodness nurse dragon made around 19 euros for the lowest in near mint first edition and then the rest are creeping up around the 20 euro mark this is not too bad it's about where it's been sat we have seen it yo-yo up and down over time a couple of euros here or there difference about around the right price for what they are going for Next up, we have Kitchen Dragon Maid, another one that's continued to creep up over time. We have seen it yo yo it down a little bit, but the overall trajectory is heading up towards the 30 euro mark. We have seen it go much, much higher over time. We have also seen it come down quite an amount, but nothing below 26 euros. There are some for around 28 if you want them in Unlimited. If you want them in first editions, they're about 30 euros a piece. Um, not too bad a price point. If this deck kicks off with playability, these will shoot up through the roof, partially because of the artwork. Let's be realistic here. Um, but also, it's one of those decks that combos off. It is dragons, and as we've mentioned before, there's always some busted bullshit going on there. So, expect that these could very well go up in future. A bit of a weird one to be invested in at the moment, unless you can get the particularly cheap um, but overall who knows i just wanted to round off with another couple of cards that i've covered previously and i wanted to see how they were getting on so we're looking here ulti galatea a minimum of 40 euros for something in near mint you are looking up more towards the 45 potentially even 50 euro mark for something in really really good condition um Will this go down? Probably not. It's going to be one of those cards that's always going to see somewhat a bit of play. And the fact that it's been so competitively viable for a long time, it is one of those cards that people will pick up for sort of cult reasons. I expect August will fall into this kind of field where we've seen the likes of Cosmo and that kind of stuff. Over time, people will continue to want to play these and they'll want the good rarities. And cards like this will keep some really solid value. And then lastly, with that in mind, we're going to talk about Dingir. So I've said this before, this is not just for Orcus decks. Anything that can make a rank 8 can do with a free send. Some free protection, of course, it does have a lot more benefits in Orcus overall. So again, don't be surprised if we see these creep up towards the 40 euro mark. At the moment, you can get them for around 34 euros. An extra 6 euros would not surprise me in the next couple of months, especially if Orcus starts to see some play at a really decent level. So that is it for another episode of Mark Watch. Hopefully you guys have really enjoyed this. If you have, you should show your support by definitely hitting that subscribe button. I'd love to see some thumbs up and some comments. If there are cards you would love to see me cover on this, feel free to reach out to me across any of my social media platforms. There'll be links in the description. Most prominently, I'm active on Facebook. You can find me on there very easily. It's not hard to recognize this face. Shoot me a message, whatever. If you see me about on Facebook... Hit me up, no problem. Thank you very much again for checking in, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed this, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the garbage content I've put together for you. Enough to hit subscribe, and maybe even drop a thumbs up and a comment. Before you go, be sure to check out the links in the description to help support the people who are making this channel a possibility. Thanks again for checking in, and I'll see you in the next one.